Grace and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, our Son, whose message has been delivered to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Word of God for our consideration is the two verses of the Gospel lesson, last two verses of John 15. When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify for you have been with me from the beginning. This is the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and whose work has saved us from our sins, the free salvation he earned has been delivered to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we began this service, we began the way we quite often do by singing a hymn. But actually, it was a little more than just singing a hymn. We were offering a prayer to God. We offer some prayers to God where we will ask him for a blessing or to do something to us that he may or may not grant to us the way we want or expect. Maybe there's a new position open at work, and we pray that God will allow us to get that position. It may or may not happen. We might have plans for a weekend and we pray for nice weather, but that may or may not happen. Maybe we fall ill and we ask God to give us a quick recovery from our illness, but that may or may not happen. In those cases, as our prayer comes to the throne of God, he hears the prayer, and then in his divine wisdom and love, he answers it in the way that is best for us, whether it be the way that we want or expect or not. But then there are other prayers where we ask God for a blessing and we know what the answer will be. Really, all seven petitions of the Lord's Prayer fall into that category. We ask God to forgive our sins and we know he's going to do it. We ask for daily bread and we know he will provide it. We ask for his kingdom to come, for his word to bring faith to us and to others and we know he will do that. We, we have that certainty because these are things God has promised to do for us. He loves hearing us ask for those things, and he gladly answers with a yes. That's the category that our hymn prayer this morning falls into. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and make, your, make our hearts your place of rest. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and you from both as three in one, that we, your name, may ever bless, and in your lives the truth confess. Come, Holy Spirit, and make our hearts your home. God is certainly going to answer yes as we use his word and his sacrament. That gospel message enables the Holy Spirit to come and live in our hearts. And then we pray that he would teach us to know the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and solidify our faith in them so that we may share that message with others in our lives. That's really what Pentecost is all about. The Holy Spirit coming to God's people, giving them their ticket to heaven, and then equipping them to share that message with others. And so today we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit would come to us to testify to the truth. Testify to us, and then testify through us. When the Counselor comes, Jesus said, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. These words were spoken to Jesus' disciples as they celebrated the Passover with him. Conversation began to, to turn to what the Passover was all about, how the, the blood of the lamb on the doorposts in Egypt freed the people, the angel of death passed over them, and how Jesus was going to shed his blood to free the people from their sins so that the angel of eternal death would pass over them as well. And Jesus explained to his disciples that he was training them to take that message out into the world and share it so that the Holy Spirit could come to more and more people and save them from their sins. But he said, the devil is not going to make it easy on you. The devil is going to oppose you, and as you go out with that message, you're going to face all kinds of challenges, all kinds of opposition. It may tend to make you a little depressed and frustrated and maybe even put a little doubt into your minds. To prevent that from happening, Jesus said to them, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. 
They had already received the Holy Spirit through the gospel and come to faith in Jesus, but this was to be a special blessing that would equip them to fight against the doubts and the opposition and, and anything else the devil could throw at them as the Holy Spirit testified about Jesus. Testify means to tell the facts. And the facts about Jesus are quite simple. We sinned and deserve death. Jesus lived perfectly, died in our place, and gives us eternal life. The Holy Spirit would solidify that message in the hearts of his disciples. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and you from both as three in one. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We know them. But teach us to know them. Solidify our faith so that we have all confidence in them. When you get hired by a company to either sell a product or to offer a service, quite often there's a training period that goes along with it. They want you to know their product well. They want you to know the service that they're offering well so that as you try to convince others to use it, you'll be confident in what you're doing. You're prepared, you're trained, you're equipped, and then you go out and you share that, and they have their questions about why they should buy your product or why your service is better than the others, but you know what you're selling, and you do it very confidently. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and you from both as three in one. Jesus knew his disciples had to have that strengthening of faith because he had been with them for three years and had seen some of their misunderstandings. There were times when he didn't, they didn't fully grasp the picture of what he had come to do. Well, they knew he came to save them from their sins, but they expected him to do more than that and set up a kingdom. And so when that kingdom didn't materialize, he knew that the devil would use that to put some doubts in their mind. He had seen other disciples, other people who were followers of him, who had a loose connection of faith to him, and when things got tough, they abandoned him. He had seen the devil at work in his own life, knew how deceitful he was, how powerful he was, and he knew that those attacks were not going to stop. They would only increase after he left and was no longer personally there with his disciples. So he, he wanted to train them, to prepare them. He wanted the Holy Spirit to give them such a, a solid faith that no matter what they faced, they would be ready for it. Our worship today celebrates the specific fulfillment of God doing that. As the disciples were in Jerusalem celebrating Pentecost, suddenly they heard what sounded like a, a mighty wind, and they saw tongues of fire that came and lighted on their heads. And the people heard these things and saw what was happening. They gathered around, and they had come from many different nations to celebrate the Passover. And all of a sudden, the disciples were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak to these people in their own languages, which they had never studied before. And Peter stood up and addressed the crowd, and very boldly he said, Jesus is the Savior, and you, Jewish people of Israel, put him to death. But God raised him from the dead, and we're going to tell you about him. As they went out into the world to share that message, they demonstrated the faith that they had been given by the Holy Spirit. Peter and John once were threatened that if you don't stop preaching about Jesus, we're going to throw you in prison, and prison was not a comfortable place. And their answer was, how can we help but speak about Jesus? We can't stop. We have that fire in our hearts. We need to share. And so they preached and they got thrown into prison. But God was with them. How appropriate that we prayed this morning that God would testify to us because the attacks of Satan against our faith have not dwindled, have not slacked off, have not become less frequent. There are, there are so many thoughts about religion in the world, so many false teachings about religion, so many false religions, and they bombard us. They sound good. They seem to be beneficial to the people who follow them. They look like something it's difficult to speak against, but they don't lead people to Jesus. And then things happen in our own lives that, that we can't quite understand, and we maybe start to doubt the love of God, the promises he's given to us. And there are those unavoidable failures, sorrows, and frustrations that come into our lives as we live in a sinful world. 
And so we pray, Holy Spirit, testify to us. Teach us to know the Father, the Son, and you who comes from them, three in one. Teach us to be strong in our faith, to stand up against the attacks of Satan. And as we become solidified in our faith, as we become so sure of God's love for us that, that none of those things can dent or harm our faith, then we also pray and use us to testify to others too. Jesus said to his disciples, you also must testify for you have been with me from the beginning. You also must testify. As believers, you have a responsibility. And we carry out that responsibility in different ways and the different roles that we've been given. Nearly 33 years ago, I stood in the pulpit at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Brown Deer, Wisconsin, about to preach a sermon to a real group of people for the first time. And I remember singing the hymn before that, sitting in that chair wondering, when we get to that last verse, am I going to be able to stand up? And when I get up to the pulpit, am I going to remember what to say? And am I going to say it right? You know, I had all the training. I went through college and I went through the seminary. My professor had worked through that sermon with me. My classmates had heard me preach it. It was approved. Everything in it was doctrinal and sound. And it, it was delivered in a clear and understandable way. And I probably had preached that sermon to the, the basement walls a couple dozen times as I practiced it. So it, it wasn't the words that were going to be the problem. But I still wondered, can I get up and do this? And then I was reminded of something that my homiletics, my sermon preaching professor said to me. He said, you're just a messenger. You didn't have to figure out the message. You didn't have to make the message powerful. You didn't have to carry out what the message said happened. You're just telling people about it. And so I realized that learning Hebrew and Greek and taking speech classes and sermon preaching classes and practicing in your basement and, and all of those things, they, they prepare you to say the words. But if that's all you do, you're not going to benefit one single person. They will just be words. It's the Holy Spirit who delivers the power through your message to change the hearts of the people that are listening. So some 32 years and 1,500 sermons later, I still get a little bit of an increased heart rate as that hymn is being sung. But I pray the same prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, testify through me. You know, God called me to be a public minister, but you're all ministers. And God said, it doesn't matter if you've got a seminary degree or not. Listen to what King David said in Psalm 8. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. The lips of children and infants can deliver that message. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And through that message, the power of the Holy Spirit silences the foe, the, the devil. And so all of us are asked this morning to think of that hymn prayer we sang. Come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our, make our hearts your home of rest. And, and teach us to know the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. Teach us to know so that we can be messengers of that powerful gospel. Because really, what God says in the Bible isn't that complicated. You know, we, we live in a really complicated world, and this whole thing, thought of religion and God can be very complicated, but it's really very simple. Man sinned, sin deserves death and hell. Jesus lived perfectly, died for you, and offers you eternal life in heaven. Little children can share that message. What God says isn't complicated, but believing what God says is impossible, unless the Holy Spirit works through those words. So I could practice my sermons dozens and dozens of times and speak them perfectly and it would do nothing if the Holy Spirit wasn't working through it. And so Jesus said to his disciples, when I return to my Father, I am going to send you the Holy Spirit. And when you pray for him to come and testify to you, the answer is going to be yes. The Holy Spirit will come to you and that's why we join this morning in asking God to send him to us to prepare us 
first of all, to hold on to that faith we have, and then to be faithful messengers to share that salvation story with others. God fulfilled his promise on that Pentecost day when the disciples were given that extra measure of strength from the Holy Spirit, when they spoke boldly, and then as they carried that message facing persecutions and opposition from the devil, unlike any we've seen in our lives, imprisonment, beatings. Peter and John, when they were released from prison, they were flogged. That means they were whipped the way Jesus was. They had their backs torn open by those Roman soldiers. But they kept preaching the message because of the power of the Holy Spirit who had testified to them and was using them to testify to others. And really, that's why we're here today. We're not here to come to faith because we already confessed, I believe that Jesus is my Savior. And if that's all life was about, then God would have swept us up to heaven. But life is about coming to know Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then being used by them to testify to others, to tell others. And that's where we want to position ourselves in life with such a, a thorough knowledge of God and his word that we boldly speak the message which the Holy Spirit will work through. And that's why we as a congregation support the, the ministry of Tree of Life, the ministry of the Wisconsin Synod, because we know that that true word needs to go out to reach the hearts of the people. And that's why we will continue to pray, come Holy Ghost, testify to the truth. Testify to us. Testify through us. Amen. And as he testifies to us, the peace of God that goes beyond our understanding will guard our hearts and minds through faith in Jesus. Amen.